Oh yeah! This is where they bring Aerith back. Final Fantasy VII freaking Rebirth is back, baby. With a vengeance, with our boy Sephiroth, Zach, who else are Cisne? Get ready, here we go. All right, everybody, we're back. We're in a different vibe right now, but uh, you got to do what you got to do. Just finished up at the gym. Make sure you take care of your mental health, your physical health, intellectual health, because if you're going to be part of this channel, you got to have all three. All right. It's obvious what we're going to be talking about today. State of play. There were some reveals that, of course, we predicted because we pay the most attention than anybody else in the world, okay? So welcome back to the channel. Let's dive into it right away. We're gonna roll through the state of play. We're not gonna go through kind of what uh, Katase and uh, Hamaguchi said, but we're really gonna go into um, the different trailers. The main focus is Final Fantasy VII freaking Rebirth is back, baby. With a vengeance, with our boy Sephiroth, Zach, who else are Cisne? Get ready, here we go. Cloud, bring me the black materia. The beginning of the end. The celebration of the faith. <laughs> A watershed moment for all mankind. So I already love this kind of version where, as we know, the black materia is the temp temple of ancients. So it looks like here, it's almost kind of like degradation. Look how these cubes are coming in. Very curious, the way they put it, the way they set it up. I'm wondering how you get access to this, because at least before you could take the boat, get off and run to it. But like, how do you get to this? <laughs> There's no entries around. Hey kids, sorry we're late. <laughs> For those who played the original game, one of the hacks you could do whenever you fight the Turks, is to put Tifa in your group because Rude will never attack Tifa. There's clearly a bad romance here between Tifa and Rude because dude came out swanging. Hey kids, sorry we're late. <laughs> Boom, knee. The synergy attacks with Yuffie look sick. This? <laughs> this? Yo, we're mine. Yo, run it back. Yo, yo, one sec. Hold the clip. All right, Aerith Barrett, I'm ready. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're going to pay. This guy, man. Oh, sick. He has like a machine now. Don Corneo. This is obviously down at uh, Corral Prison. You can try to fight your way up. So I actually read about... I maybe I shouldn't talk about it. Roche is a bro. Man, you try so hard. And last so long. <laughs> the, the end, it doesn't even matter. These are all clones. These are all clones. These are all clones. The world will be saved, but will you? I already know this scene alone. Anytime I'm on Twitter, everybody wants to argue so much about who Cloud's gonna be in a relationship with. I'm just like, this is like a serious topic? Oh, well, the proof of this, and the proof of that, and the proof of this. And I'll say this one time for the new viewers who may be coming to the channel. The books don't matter. I know, whoa, what do you mean? The canon of this? The books don't matter. Anything from OG FF7 doesn't matter. This is not FF7. 
And I think people need to click that on. This is not FF7. This is FF7R series. This is not FF7. So the way I kind of look at the Ultimania, the novels, all of that stuff, is I look at it very similar to Star Wars. So in Star Wars, uh, Dave Filoni pretty much used a lot of the source material from Leg Star Wars Legends, which is not canon. But they still use it as inspiration to tell a story. The perfect example of this is Timothy Zahn's uh, portrayal of Thrawn, right? So Thrawn is this evil blue guy. Not even evil. I don't want to get into it. <laughs> don't want to get into it. But Dave Filoni uses Timothy Zahn's novels to get inspiration for telling a story. But if we look at the Bad Batch also, that also uses Mount Tantus arc ideas to develop the story. But the old Mount Tantus in Legends has Mara Jade, has Luke Skywalker's hand that was cut off to use to clone, all this crazy stuff. But it never had a Saj Ventress coming back to life, which is what's happening in Bad Batch. So I just need people to just think, like just have their own thoughts. Because it's so frustrating. It's like you talk to me, it's like, oh, well, the book said this. And it's like, yo, do you ever like think like by yourself? Because on this channel, we do the ultimate thinking skills. Knowledge, knowledge 1,000. It's over 9,000. Okay? So that's how I kind of view all the books. I look at them as, yeah, it's inspiration. But what is in the game, that is the, like, in the, if you want to go hierarchy, what's in the game, Ultimania, novel, however else, what, what's in the game is number one. Is number one. Because it's in the game. So all the developers thought, oh, after they all had the knowledge of the novels, they all had the knowledge of the Ultimanias, they all developed the damn game. So what's in the game is the highest of the hierarchy. Not like, oh, in the book it says this and I love you. And it's like, yo, who cares? <laughs> who cares? <laughs> Air's about to die and Zach about to be with Cisne anyways, y'all. Gang, gang, Cisne's got... <laughs> I'm not getting into it, guys. That was a joke. I'm not getting into it. I don't care who Cloud ends up with. I don't care who Zach ends up with. All I care, the only thing I care about the maximum of life is Sephiroth <laughs> Redemption Arc. That is all I care about. Like, top priorities. Because there's a reason why they showed us Glenn. They showed us young Sephiroth. They showed us the white feathers coming down from the helicopter when Sephiroth dropped down. There's a reason for that. It's not just, oh, they just threw it in. No. It's because they're showing us who the one-winged angel was. And now they're going to go to the dark side, show that he's manipulated by Genova. And my take is, which you can agree with, you can disagree with, but this is where we're at. Vincent will explain to Sephiroth, Genova's not your mother. Lucretia is your mother. And this will snap him back into reality. Genova is the big bad. I'm going to show you some stuff today. Don't be mad. There is a spo spoiler warning. I know I'm already started. Spoiler warning. Spoiler warnings. Beep, boop, beep, boop. Spoiler warnings, okay? Let's get back to it. I'm back now, Aaron. I'm kept, back. Kept this promise. I promise, he said. Man, she looks beautiful. It's sad. That you retrieve it. The black materia. And just like how I just spoke about Star Wars, for me, this is a huge, this is like, yo, this is like copyright, bro. These freaking zombie face guys are clearly, well, I'll show, I'll add it onto the video, but if you ever saw the Wills, um, they're the ones who are the originators of the Force, how to control it, the good side, the bad side, that there isn't really good and bad, it's all really one, and people use it for their own personal gain, the Jedi and the Sith. And Qui-Gon G first kind of had his experience with the Wills to how to live and how to force project all that stuff. And then Yoda met the Wills in one of the episodes, right? And he actually found out that he actually does have a deep fear deep inside his heart. So this is what I think they're using these guys as, which is similar to the Wills, which would be, they would be all knowledgeable. They would know everything about the live stream, everything about uh, the black material, white material, everything about the whispers. So if you have these people as the top knowledge guides, it makes it less of an impact when Aerith inevitably dies. Because it's not like, oh, we'll never have the knowledge of how to get there. It's like, oh, you just go talk to the friggin' Wills guy. Please, it alone can liberate us from this endless dream. 
endless dreams. So I don't want to put too much emphasis on this because you guys already know where I'm at. Cloud, Zack can grab the feather and it doesn't disappear, but Cloud can grab Sephiroth's feather and it disappears. So you already know where my head's at in terms of this, but I won't really push the whole dream thing in this episode. I'll just say that this is not, I don't think this is a reference to my theory, although I wish it was. Be like, yeah, man, this is proof of my theory. I'm right. Yeah, yeah, Cloud's in a dream. I don't think it's that. What I think this is, is these guys can't die. The whole thing about gods and humans is gods want to be human because they end up, everybody around them dies that they fall in love with, have a family, they all end up dying. So gods want to become humans uh, and humans want to, because they're like, oh man, I only got 80 years on this world. I want to live forever. It's like we both are jealous and want the opposite. So I think that's all he's really saying here is that it's an endless dream. Please find the black material so that you could, we can finally go, we could finally die, we could finally be in peace, be put, join the life stream or whatever the hell he's trying to say here. But that's just my general off the top thoughts here. Passing through. For those who don't know, I made a long ass video. It's about an hour long and I should probably clip it up just for the Cisne part, but I'll kind of try to um, uh, give my points here really quickly. So Cisne is crucial to Zack's storyline because Cisne is the one who gives Zack the idea of freedom. When they're in the slums and Zack is helping Cisne kind of clear out the area, area. Oh, then the slums are in Midgar. When they're in Midgar, they're clearing out, I think, Sector 8 or whatever. And Cisne and Zack are fighting and Zack defeats Genesis. And when Genesis, a copy of Genesis, and Genesis black wings out and you see the feathers kind of falling down. Cis, Zack is like super upset at this point because he was in Benora with Angeal and he couldn't get through to Angeal. Angeal's like, I'm a monster. I'm a monster. This whole friggin' whatever. Okay. I don't want to get, I love Angeal. So it makes me mad thinking about it. Cause I'm like, Angeal, bro, you're the perfect soldier. Stop being crazy. Anyways, Cisne, when that happens, tells Zach that wings don't symbolize uh, monsters wings symbolize freedom for those who have none this is the first time that message was implanted in zach's mind and then when zach runs into angeal uh when he's chasing hollander outside the base before he meets Aerith, he actually confronts angeal and speaks verbatim to angeal wings don't symbolize monsters wings symbolize freedom those are angels wings then also he goes <laughs> later on in the, in the game, he goes, those wings, I want them. There is this aspect that Cisne provides to Zack about freedom that is the seed that grows it into his head. Why he thinks freedom is the most, the most important thing when he becomes slowly enlightened to um, what he's actually doing in the world. So Cisne is massively important. She also gives him the bike to get into town when they're surrounded by Shinra troops. So without Cisne, Zack is a sitting duck. So let's be clear. Cisne implanted the idea of freedom for him, which Red talks about in the last trailer, which Aerith talks about in the last trailer, which Zack says right before he dies, the price of freedom is steep. That is all because the seed that Cisne planted. Now we're on the same page. Moving on. You. And she would recognize Cloud when she says you, because when she, last time she saw him, he was passed out. The only thing I'm kind of wondering about the timeline is how much time has it been since they last saw her to when she goes searching for Zack in the helicopter when Sung sends her and to this point? Because it could be months because her hair looks a little bit longer. She's in a different outfit. She's not wearing her Turk suit, which means she likely is no longer working for the Turks. Also, when we saw Zack and and Cisne and Gungaga, Zack told her, make sure you look out for my family for me. And then she's like, your family's already adopted me. And then he goes, Cisne. And she goes, that's not my real name. So they've always been flirtatious. Always kind of like, I always loved their dynamic. I thought it was very natural, very cool. She's normal, he's normal. And it was like, okay, this is like cool. So Cisne, we get it. She gets a thumbs up. Johnny? Like, yeah, no one cares. Like, <laughs> Johnny did, bro. Ah! Hey, guys. They're getting some sun, too, huh? <laughs> Barrett. Barrett looks hilarious. I'm so happy he's in this suit, man. This is awesome. Yeah. Well, Red, how do we look? Huh? 
If this was an anime, he'd bleed from his nose. <laughs> I won't say it it would be Disney. I don't remember that from Ojin. Okay, guys. This is what I was talking about in my previous videos. Vincent will be the one to solve Sephiroth's craziness. Sephiroth, whether you believe he freed himself at the end of the edge of creation, or you think he didn't free himself at the edge of creation, let's say we're going with OG storyline. Sephiroth is under the control of Genova. The reason they added all the Ever Christ information for young Sephiroth is to show that he's a lonely boy searching for his mother. Lazard tells us every hero or every soldier has a dream. We know what Genesis' dream was. Get the gift of the goddess. We know what Zack's dream was. To be a hero. And Angeal's dream. To destroy all that creates harm. Or whatever the hell he said. Right? All soldiers have dreams. Sephiroth's dream is to find his mother. He tells us that in Ever Crisis. He's a lonely boy. Imagine being a... a you were separated from your mother at birth. You're told she died at your birth. You have a picture of her that shows how beautiful Lucretia is. And then after, Hojo tells you your mother is Genova. Referring to the cells, not his actual birth mother. Do people not think that when Sephiroth, who's a clear intellect, in the missions, between missions, he read all the archives in the Shinra... Shinra HQ, he also read all the archives in the Shinra mansion or manor, whatever. Sephiroth's not just a friggin' ooh, I'm a bumbling idiot. He's not like a family guy, Peter, Griffin, Homer Simpson. He's not that. He's a war hero, battle tested, superior strategist, ultimate Masamune Wasabi on you. That's Sephiroth. So let's not get it confused. Next here, just want to talk real quick about Vincent. I honestly believe. There will be a redemption arc for Sephiroth, either in the second game or the third game. It doesn't really matter which game, but I do think that it's going to happen. I think that it only makes sense because of the hidden waterfall scene in the original when they're talking and, and Lucretia asks because she can still speak through the crystal. And obviously her interactions with, in, with Vincent and Dirge. There's going to be a point where they're going to run into Sephiroth with Vincent and he's going to be like, and Sephiroth's going to be like, mother, mother, all that stupid jazz. And Vincent's going to be like, Genova's not your mother, dude. If they don't do that, it'll just be bad storytelling. So that's my, that's my, <laughs> so I have to be right. <laughs> I'm going to be right. Either it's bad storytelling or Vincent's going to, Sephiroth's going to be like, holy shit, is she my mother? And he's going to meet her. And I think the perfect symmetry you have of when Sephiroth touches the door to Genova's chamber and it opens is going to be Sephiroth touching the crystal of Lucretia and the crystal is going to smash and set her free. Katase, bro. Hire me, dog. <laughs> so I think right here I have a history with him talking about Sephiroth. This is a reveal of like, oh, okay, they're letting us know that Vincent does know who Sephiroth is and he's likely going to spread, spread some information and provide some information and knowledge to the group. It's a beautiful song. Wait, don't misunderstand. You'll need a way home. So when you're ready, I'll be here. An emissary from Wutai is here. Sent by Viceroy Saru. Like, who is this emissary? There's so many people. You cannot say this is the same game. Who is this guy? Who is this? What, what base are they in now? This is not downtown Midgar. This is clearly a new base. Like, ugh. I don't know why people are fighting so hard. Like, no, it's the old. It's like, no, man. It's not. It's not. This is like, it reminds of Game of Thrones, how they have multiple bases. And like, look at Rufus's face. 
this is a face of, holy shit, I know who that is. Or I'm surprised. This is not just like, oh, a Viceroy. With all this goddamn Yo, Dine looks insane. How can I ever hold my daughter again? Those we hate, those we love, those we fear. Genova would become anyone to fool her prey. Don't do this! But I know. Cloud is ridiculous. Because I was obviously in the trailers, right? Sephiroth as Genova saying. She has the power to be anybody you, those you feel. So they're obviously playing on the idea that uh, either Cloud or somebody's going to attack or kill Tifa. Uh, maybe they realize that Tifa's the one. Maybe Sephiroth realized that Tifa was the one that pieced together Cloud's mind. And he has to come back and mess with Cloud to have him attack Tifa because then he'll be free. And maybe lose his passion. Or maybe be weaker and not able to defeat him. I mean, that would be the simple answer. But obviously, what the? Why the hell would he attack Tifa, bro? This guy's insane. He's unhinged. So I'm saying, you can't listen to this guy. And I said it in my last, one of my last episodes, where I'm like, uh, Cloud is gonna kill somebody. The way he looks at Johnny, the other games when he raises his sword against Aerith multiple times, it's like, uh, and like when he beats her down in Temple of Aerith. What are they gonna show that? Like people, like Cloud's unhinged, man. Until I, Advent Children, Cloud though, sick. I read him. Sephiroth! Hey! No. Not you. Here. Take it. This isn't about me, though. It's about saving the world. And you. The reunion. When I could play on whatever, live stream black, live stream white, fighting for influence, but... Are you excited yet? Are you not entertained? End of the month. So this shows us the truth. And we need to stop fighting. Just what they show us is the truth. The storm actually happened, even though the storm was caused by the whispers. The storm actually happened. <laughs> and then they teleported out by walking through a portal. So the dead bodies we saw could be the actual dead bodies or injured bodies. I'm waiting, Cloud. In Final Fantasy. So I only want to play that part because I want to, at a later time, I want to talk to you guys about, I probably have to do another spoiler warning, but just remember, Cloud will join Sephiroth. Sephiroth is not evil. He's just confused. I want to do a review on some of the gameplay. Am I going to be playing the demo? Am I going to be streaming the demo? No. I'm likely not going to play the demo. I want to play the game completely fresh. I want to spend my 100 hours fresh in the game. For now, that's all you get. Me in my car on the mic. <laughs> just finished the workout. So actually, there's something at the end of this, I think. All right, so we're back even fleshed out some of the mini games that were featured as part of the original Final Fantasy VII's main scenario. Though this one is not in the original, I highly suggest... <laughs> Red in that friggin' outfit. He's planning on using the black material, but I won't let that happen. He has to be stopped. While mini games and map exploration are a big part of Rebirth's charm, there's more to it than just that. Rebirth provides a cinematic experience. With this whole scene, this whole scene. Okay, I got nieces and nephews, okay? I ain't got no kids, but I got nieces and nephews. I've seen Rapunzel more than I'd like to admit. And when I saw this scene, it reminded me of when Finn and Rapunzel light the, the lights festival. And I was like, oh, so beautiful. Quality <laughs> content and more of it than remake. Whispers are there. Why would the whispers be there? One that ultimately decides. Why would the whispers be there? As for the graphics. Oh, that should go back to the edge of creation. Are these the will things? It is. They're on like a boat in the live stream. Yo, this is definitely that wanted wills guy, right? And that's Nanaki, I could see. Whichever you prefer. Ah, uh, flashback scene. Yeah, because that's when he sees. He's not turning. He hasn't turned his back yet. 
I'm Already not talking about relationships. This last part, the third part, is very important. Okay, so pay close attention. You know how I showed you guys scenes of Last Order? You guys remember, right? And then I always tell you, people argue, it's canon, it's not canon, it's... And they argue, they don't even really know what, like... What part of it's not canon? Zangan? That's my boy. He's in this game. <laughs> But what you'll notice about this exact scene, this whole animation scene here, and I'll clip, I'll put them both sides split screen so you can actually see, oh man, this is the exact same scene. This is stolen from Last Order for all those non-canon freaking people. And like, I find it so funny how people, they're always like, trust the developers, trust the developers, trust the developers. But then when they do something that they don't like, it's like, you need to, this is not canon, you need to cancel this. It's just so funny how like it works in their head. There's an important scene I want to show you guys right here that I'm sure you saw. Boom. This is proof, and I know I've talked to a bunch of people about it, but Katase wanted adamantly for this song to be in the game. Hamaguchi had didn't not didn't want to, but he had no plans of putting it in. Nomura had no plans of putting it in until Katase like, you have to put this song in. And then they added it in. But they didn't add it in a way that, for me, would solidify what people argue about this whole thing. For me, this is just VR stuff. Just like Weiss was just VR stuff. Fighting Bahamut was just VR stuff. It's just VR stuff. It's not real life. Aerith is gone. And we now have some sort of hologram or holographic of her saved at Golden Saucer. This just means that whoever... It's like a jukebox... Whoever puts the quarter in and plicks no promises to keep, it just plays for them. It could be me, it could be you, it could be Cloud, it could be Barrett. They're just putting the money into the jukebox, and the jukebox doesn't know who it's singing to. It just sings the song that it's been requested. That's all this is. I don't people I don't look into this more like, oh, oh, and the lyrics. And the it's like, why would they put it in a VR? Use the logic of why would they put it in a VR and not just have her say the words to the person? in the game before she dies in a dream any any type of way but not in a vr <laughs> so they lost me with that clearly showing us it's virtual reality and the flower petals are flying everywhere so it's not like there was a secret petal that was designed to drop into cloud's hand there's petals flying everywhere some fell in barrett's hand too i'm sure But, you know me, guys. I got to add a little bit of sauce on this. This is where they bring Aerith back. We know Chad Lee is a cyborg st stuck at Shinra until you beat all the battle system stuff and then you free him, right? I think that and in when you free him, he says, my superior knowledge to humans and blah, 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 blah. I think that after Chad Lee sees all of this VR stuff and sees Aerith... He's going to find a way to bring the AI out of the VR back into a real person, into a body, into a something. But that's how they bring, that's how they could end her and bring her back. I spoke about this on Twitter the other night. I was like, mark my words. This is how they bring her back. This is how they'll bring her back. Welcome to the channel. <laughs> This is where you could say, okay, they're using Livestream Black and Livestream White. They're both fighting for Cloud's hand. Who else said take my hand? Sephiroth. Who said take my hand here? Aerith. They're both fighting for the good side, bad side of Cloud. That I can agree with because you know what? It's in the game. So you can take what's in the game. <laughs> The one question that people should really be asking about this whole scene is if this is the loveless play, are we finally going to get an answer to chapter five? Because as we know, Hojo told us and Genesis also told us the final chapter is not written. The best friends fight and we, oh, snap. Is Cloud going to fight Zach? No, I'm not. I'm not going there. We're not going there. 
all we're going to talk about is the question I don't see people asking is, is there going to be an answer for the end of Loveless? Because once we have that answer, we'll know how the game ends. Because that's the whole thing Genesis is fighting through. Loveless this, Loveless that. It's a story that everybody knows. Um, it's also part of kind of like in their world, they have Loveless. They have the tales of the Setra and the Ancients, which is kind of like a story time thing that everybody knows. So almost everybody, it's like, I don't know, what do we, what do we all, most people know? Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall, right? Most people know that. The big bad wolf. Huffed and he puffed and he blew his house down, right? That's the same thing for them in their world. It's like, oh, everybody knows these stories. So once we have that answer, it will give us the clue of how the game will end. Questions that people should be asking. What is the Whisper's involvement? Is Genesis going to be at the Nibelheim event? Is Sephiroth uh, going to see Lucretia when he talks to Vincent? Is Sephiroth still controlled by Genova? Are the Sephiroths that we see in the trailer, Genova replicants, clones, failed experiments, we still have to see Dr. Sharin and see what he's doing for the cellular degradation. But you already know all of the soldier programs... Everybody needs to die to end Genova. It's not going to be just Earth saving the planet. Cloud needs to die. Sephiroth needs to die. Zack needs to die. Lucretia needs to die. And maybe not die like you think like, oh, a knife sword. Like maybe it's like sacrifice. Because if there is a living cell of Genova on the planet, she will always have some form of control on the people. We'll end it with that. Next episode will be about the Zalem. New Zalem trailer, video, gameplay, whatever. It's going to blow your mind if you haven't seen it yet. So stay tuned for the next one. Like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate all of you for showing your support. Get in the comments what I got wrong, what I got right. Do I make sense this time? Now that you saw Cisne and I made a video a couple months ago, am I onto something? I think so. You should think so. Catch you on the next one.